Hey everybody, welcome back again to Late to the Game. I'm Chris Ham. I'm Car. And we're playing Sonic and Knuckles. Lava! Oh, the floor is lava. Yeah. Oh. Literally, floor is lava. It's like the game my kids play. It. I had a. <laughs> when I was driving over to your house today. Okay, you know, like, of course you know, sometimes you see, like, I guess homeless people with, like, little cardboard signs that are, like, you know, need work or out of a job, but anything helps, God bless, stuff like that. Yeah. I was driving to your house today, and there was a guy, I was at a red light, and the guy was standing there, and he just had a small, tiny little cardboard sign, and in big, giant, like, bold letters, it just said, travel fund. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of awesome. I yeah, I, I cracked up. I was like, okay, yeah, cool. I still haven't given any money because I don't have any, but I probably would have given that guy money. <laughs> oh, when I, whenever Ashley and I went to Austin. Oh, there's Ashley. Again. Ashley and I, Ashley and I went to Austin. Uh, we bought a carton of cigarettes before we went, mm -hmm. and there are bums a lot in Austin. Austin. Uh, yeah, Austin. Austin. And, uh... Like, it got to the point where, like, I was just handing out packs of cigarettes. But it was really funny because we had bought a pack of Camel Reds, and we smoke Camel Red Lights. And so, like, instead of handing them the half pack of Camel Reds that we had, I was uh -huh. handing them fresh packs of Camel Red Lights. Just entire packs of cigarettes? Yeah. And Ashley was like, what are you doing with your life? <laughs> Well, that's sweet of you. Yeah, I was trying to be nice. Remember that one time that we saw a Hobo and I told him to get a fucking job? And I was like 16 at the time? <laughs> I think you might have been there. I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. I know I told that to a homeless guy when I was in San Francisco. I used to be mean to bums. And I still am, because I think it's kind of shitty that you're going to try and like... Well, eh, that's, a, that's a sensitive subject. I am to ones that I'm like... You might hurt me if, if I let you get near me. Like, sometimes you see somebody that you're like, this person is, you know, just having a hard time. They're down on their luck. They obviously need help. You know, they're starving. They're tiny. They're probably mentally unstable. And you feel really bad. Mm -hmm. And then there's sometimes where the guy's just like, what's up, man? Give me a dollar. And you're like, fuck you. <laughs> get the fuck away from me. I'll kick you with a dick. Well, I hate whenever they, like, make up some bullshit story. Oh, yeah. That's... They're like, I'm just trying to get bus fare to get back to my girlfriend's not answering her cell phone right now. And, uh, my cell phone just died and I just need, like, six bucks in gas. I'm like, it is clear that you do not own a car. Because love... if you owned a car, you would be able to drive to a place that has a shower. That reminds me of that Falling Down movie with Michael Douglas where that one bum comes up to him. He's like, yo, man, like, my car is blah. And he's like, why don't you show me your driver's license? He's like, what? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I forgot about that part. I love that movie. Yeah, me too as well. I, sh I showed Ashley that movie. <laughs> nice. <laughs> no, seriously, that's a great fucking yeah, movie. Yeah, it's super awesome. But that bum cracks me up because he, like, Michael Douglas asks him the right questions to make him shut the fuck up. He's yeah. Like, he's like, oh, uh, I don't know, man. Just give me something. That briefcase, you don't need it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you got you got two bags. I ain't got nothing. <laughs> Dude, that, that movie is funny. I was actually... I swear to God, I'm going to start a counter on how many times I say it's so funny or it's funny. Or like. Things, or like. Well... <laughs> We both do that quite a bit. That's how everybody does that. But, um, no, no, I was having a conversation, um, I think on Twitter, I don't know, about, like, good character writing and how, like, making a character who you, who everybody thinks is good, uh, turn out to not be good yeah. is, like, lazy, just, like, amateur-esque writing. Okay, um, wait, hang on, hang on. I kind of spaced out there for a second. So, a character that you think is good turns out to not be good. This was in the, okay, they were talking about it in the context of how, like, every four or five years or so, the X-Men comic books will have Professor X do something unethical. And it'll be like, oh, Professor X seems like such a good guy, but in, in all actuality, he did this thing, and that's not so ethical, and he's, oh, he might not be as good as you think he does. And it's like, that's lazy writing. Yeah. Like, being like, oh, this character that you thought was good is actually maybe not so good. Like, it's been done so many times. <laughs> but I really love 
Um, when what? I just love how passionate you're speaking about this right now. <laughs> you got your arms waving about. I'm sorry, I'm Italian. That's how we talk. Ooh, we actually, wave life. our fucking arms around. Ooh. Um, ooh. Uh, I was. Uh, I said I, I really enjoy it when the, the character like the entire time thinks that he is the good guy and then it turns out that he's not like he like his falling moral, down yeah like yeah. like falling down exactly yeah. like that's the example that i used like the the character's moral compass is you know a little skewed but they don't realize it until like the end when they're like oh god i was the bad guy the whole time i thought i was doing what i you know i thought i was doing what was right Actual, and falling down is one of the perfect examples of that. Yeah, because at the end, whenever he's facing off against Robert Duvall, he's like, "I'm the bad guy." Yeah, he li yeah he literally says, "I'm the bad guy." Like he doesn't he doesn't get it until the very end when he's like terrorized his ex wife and daughter that he's like, "Oh my god, like what am I doing?" Yeah, and then he's like, "I've got a gun. <laughs> I've got a gun right I've got now." A gun. <laughs> oh no, not the cloud. Should have saved your files to the cloud, not ran into it and killed yourself. Yeah, those clouds are tricky. Like if you don't do the right thing, you're dead. Ooh, fire, fire. I'm a fancy motherfucker, Chris Ham. <laughs> okay. Oh, back here. Dang. I had a um, I had a random thought the other day. Please share. Okay. When was when was the last time? Somebody ran for president that had like facial hair. I don't know. You tell me if you know. I, I don't honestly know. I want to say the last time somebody had really fucking epic facial hair was probably Teddy Roosevelt. Like he had a pretty sweet mustache, right? Okay. Okay. I don't know if that's actually true. I didn't take the time to actually look it up. But I was just I was thinking about it, it was late one night. I was about to go to sleep, which is when I always have my most bizarre thoughts. But I was like, the next time, like the the very first time, somebody runs for president with like a fucking epic beard or like a really sweet mustache, they're gonna win, hands down. I'm serious. In I'm this day and age, serious. In this day and age, yes. Yes, I agree with you. Yes, because I mean, most presidential campaigns are a fucking beauty contest, anyways. Like. It's true. It's sad, but it's like you just look at somebody's face, and that's how lots of people decide. Well, then how did Obama? Because he's better looking than John McCain. Yeah, that's a good point. Like that's that's not that's science actually. Yeah. Like scientifically, and Obama's his name face. Is Mitt. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like he. It's a beauty contest. It's fucking sad, but it's true. <laughs> Um, <laughs> my name is Mitt. R what? Yeah, please repeat that to yeah, me, please. Mitt? <laughs> Are you sure? Is that stamp? Is that stamp or something? Mitchell? <laughs> no, it's just Mitt. It's just Mitt. Um, but yeah, the next time somebody has like a, like an Obi Wan Kenobi in the, you know, fucking prequels, like an Ewan McGregor style beard, mm -hmm. they're gonna fucking win, man. It's like. It's just people trust the beard, man. It's people, it's people trust the beard. Yeah, it's true. I I really honestly feel like are you are you listening, Democratic and Republican Party for the next campaign? Have your candidate grow a beard. He'll win as long as he looks good in it. If you, if you're pulling off like a you know Walter White at the end of fucking Breaking Bad kind of beard, like if you're pulling off a good beard, you're gonna fucking win yeah. just on that alone. It'll happen. <laughs> it will. You'll have at least all the women voters. And if it's sweet enough, the dudes will be like, wow, dude, that cool. beard is too cool for me not to vote for this guy. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm, a, I'm in agreement with you, Chris Sam. That's a really good thought. Yeah. Like, I'm really glad that that established itself into your brain and then your brain stem decided it's, it's to. It's always at, like, fucking 1 o'clock in the morning. I'm, like, trying to go to sleep, and I have the most bizarre random thought that I'm just like, I so I have to inform somebody of this. I feel like I could stack up lives in this area, because I started with 10 and now I have 12. And I can just go around that little turnabout thing again. I don't know if you noticed, Chris Ham, but like, I died by the cloud like up here somewhere. And I just went around and collected lives. Really? Yeah. Oh, like, great job. Like three of them. Randomly. Can you okay. kill those little bastards? Oh, oh my god, he just exploded. Yeah, that's what they do. <laughs> they just explode. 
Yeah. Remember like, those? Oh, I'm just waking up from my nap. Oh, <laughs> you remember those uh, tobacco like anti-smoking ads? It's like explode. It's got the kids like jumping off the or bungee jumping. Oh yeah. Explode. No. You it's like one out of three people that drink it, like, fucking explode. <laughs> yeah. I do remember that. Explode. They, they'll try anything to get you to not smoke. I haven't seen a lot of those lately. Does, does, uh, does that group still do stuff? What were they called? Truth? Yeah, Truth. Okay, one of my fav- Oh, no. One of my favorite memories of Chris- Oh, no. <laughs> Ham was whenever. Story, yeah, one of my favorite memories is whenever we were at uh, Warp Tour. We were at Warp Tour, and they had like one of those truth canvassy things set up. Like it was a trailer, and they had this deal where like you could ska dance. Oh uh, well, that's what it was. Uh, you let me tell a story. Okay, yourself. you go ahead. Okay, and you correct anything that I may have forgotten or okay. left out. Anyway, so so Chris Ham and I are like walking around Warp Tour, and we see this like this dance floor set up, and there's like a, a truth trailer, and they're like trying to like promote no smoking and this that and another, and it was for ska dancing, and that was about the time that we were totally into ska music, like Real Big Fish, and Chris Ham's a badass ska dancer, so. He was like, I'm, I'm, in, I'm in. So they were having a contest to see who could ska dance the best, and whoever won got a free hat. <gasps> oh my god, oh my god! Oh. Okay, this is where I'm gonna get another live. Watch this. See what I'm saying? I'm like farming lives here. Yeah, totally. <laughs> anyway, so so Chris Ham, like, he's like, I'll totally do it. So he goes up onto the dance floor, they play a ska song, he totally kills it. Just destroys the fucking ska dance. And then they give him a hat. Now, this is truth, a no smoking campaign, mind you. And he takes his hat and he's like, all right, let's go. And I'm like, cool. And then we walk away from the place and he lights up a fucking cigarette, like right in front of the place <laughs> after he puts his hat on. And we just continued on with our lives. It was one of the coolest things I've ever seen Chris M do. <laughs> I honestly feel a little shitty about that now because they're doing a good thing. <laughs> it's like, yes, I'm like, I understand that I have a terrible <coughs> habit that I'm. Oh, god damn. What? Oh, that just insta kills you? Fuck that. That's all right. I can get three lives. <laughs> this sucks, man. I'm sorry, viewers. I'm really trying here. Uh, it's okay. It's been a while since I played. It, it really was that, though. They were like, it was like guy. it was like a guy with a megaphone, and they're like, who could do the best air guitar? And like four people would get up and they'd do a little thing and they're like, yeah! And they like throw them some free swag. And they're like, who could do the best ska dance? And I just like jumped up on stage and did that. And they're like, way to go, man! And threw me a hat and I was like, cool! And put the hat on and took my pack of cigarettes out and lit one up and walked off of their faces. Oh yeah. Oh my god. It was, it was totally awesome. I Sweet. feel like, I know, like, it shouldn't be as funny as it is because it's honestly kind of a shitty thing for me to do, but it was just so fucking priceless. No, it was perfect. And I wouldn't have it any other way. Oh, God. I wouldn't have it any other way. Give me that life. Thank you. I really should have gone the other way, but that life was too hard to pass up. Oh, my God. Is that going to disappear? <laughs> I really hope You're just that fucking freaking out over here. I really hope that that disappears at some point. I'm gonna leave the area and come back, and I'm sure it will be gone. And, come if, on. and if it's gone, yeah, I'm gonna use this boing. Yeah, boing it up. I'm gonna boing on this. We're gonna boing on a lot of stuff when we come back. Yeah. To the next time we play this. <laughs> Pause. Later, guys. Boop.